Good morning, I'm Sister Nella Sammons from Tornado Apostolic Church. Uh, my devotion this morning is entitled, The Anchor Holds. I think it goes without saying that it takes a very special person to be a mother. Being a parent changes everything, but being a parent also changes with each baby. Here are some of the ways having a second and a third child is different from having the first. Your clothes. Your first baby, you begin wearing maternity clothes as soon as your doctor confirms you're pregnant. Second baby, you wear your regular clothes for as long as possible. Third baby, your maternity clothes are your regular clothes. Their clothes. First baby, you pre-wash your newborn clothes color, coordinate, coordinate, coordinate them, and fold them neatly in the baby's little bureau. Second baby, you check to make sure that the clothes are clean and discard only the ones with the darkest stains. Third baby, boys can wear paint, can't they? Worries, first baby. At the first sign of distress, a whimper, a frown, you pick up the baby. Second baby, you pick the baby up when she wails and threaten to, uh, if she threatens to wake your firstborn. Third baby, you teach a three-year-old how to rewind the mechanical swing. Hannah's story is a testament to God's faithfulness, demonstrating the power of faith, hope, and honor in trusting God amidst life trials. In 1 Samuel 1, 27, it says, For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition, which I ask of him. The first baby, your change of the baby's diaper every hour, whether they need it or not. Second baby, you change their diaper every two to three hours, if needed. Third baby. You try to change their diaper before others start to complain about the smell. Or you see it sagging to their knees. At home, first baby, you spend a good bit of, day, of your every day just gazing at the baby. Second baby, you spend a bit of every day watching to be sure your older child isn't squeezing or poking or hitting the baby. Third baby, you spend a little bit of every day hiding from the children. Mother's Day is traditionally the day when children give something back to their mothers for all the spit they produce to wash dirty faces and all the old gum they held in their hands, all the noses they wipe and all the bloody knees they made well with a kiss. This is the day mothers are rewarded for washing all their sheets in the middle of the night driving kids to school when they miss the bus, or enduring all the football games in the rain. It's appreciation day for making your children finish something they said they couldn't do. Not believing them when they said, I hate you, and sharing their good times and the bad times. Their cards probably won't reflect it, but what they're trying to say is thank you for showing up. Irma Baum Back, she writes, for the first four or five years after I had children, I considered motherhood a temporary condition, not a calling. It was a time of my life set aside for exhaustion and long hours. It would pass. Then one afternoon, with three kids in tow, I came out of a supermarket pushing a cart with four wheels that went in opposite directions when my toddler's son got away from me. Just outside the door, he ran toward a machine holding bubble gum in a glass dome. In a voice that shattered glass, he shouted, Gimme, gimme. I told him I would give him what for if he didn't stop shouting and get in the car. As I physically tried to pry his body from around the bubble gum machine, he pulled the entire thing over, glass and balls bubble gum, went all over the parking lot. We had now attracted a sizable crowd. I told him 
He would never see a cartoon as long as he lived. And if he didn't control his temper, he was going to be making license plates in the state. He tried to stifle his sobs as he looked around at the staring crowd. Then he did something that I was to remember for the rest of my life. In his helpless quest for comfort, he turned to the only one he trusted his emotions with, me. He threw his arms around my knees and held on for dear life. I had humiliated him, chastised him, and berated him, but I was still all he had. That single incident defined my role. I was a major force in this child's life. Sometimes we forget how important stability is to a child. I've always told mine, the easiest part of being a mother is giving birth. The hardest part is showing up for it each day. Mothers aren't, aren't they something? I've often wondered, if there's a single man on earth that could dare stand up and say he could feel a mother's shoes. As Mr. Bombeck says, God help the poor man that is dumb enough to stand up and claim he could. But no matter how much hope I had for my children, I could never come close to the hope of the woman that carried them and gave birth to them. In my mind, I still can still see the look of pure holy love that came across my wife's face as each child was placed in her arms. That look never changed through the birth of all three of them, a look that I am sure many of you mothers understand in the deepest corners of my heart. I hope you never lose your sense of wonder. I hope you never take one single breath for granted. Tomorrow I will finish with my devotion on the anchor holds. God bless your day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.